Great. Hello, everyone. Thanks for coming to my talk. The title of my talk today is Turning Your Weapons Against You. My talk focuses, about, focuses around using enterprise security tools against the enterprise itself, hence the name Turning Your Weapons Against You. First, the obligatory slide about me. My name is Andrew Blaine. My Twitter handle is MTB Moose. Get hold of me there if you want any information about the talk. I work for Investec in South Africa in group security. I'm a pen tester and red teamer. Also, just a dude that watched hackers back in the day and thought, that's really cool. I want to do that one day. Uh, turned out to be quite different in real life. <laughs> uh, special thanks to Kaylin Sachs, Jeffrey Blaine, and Tian Enslin for getting me here. Um, it was quite a, quite a chore to get here, uh, and they supported me, supported me a lot, and I wanted to thank them. Uh, and thanks for B-Sides for accepting my talk. So the first slide is about post-exploitation, uh, exploiting the vulner vulnerability management process. Some of the work that I do as a pen tester and red team involves researching post-exploitation techniques. A common place for a pen tester to find himself or herself is with a foothold in an environment and the need to move laterally within the network or environment. An area I recently focused on was exploiting tools used within the vulnerability management process, particularly vulnerability scanners. In enterprise networks, with many thousands of endpoints, it's impractical to populate vulnerability scanners with lists of hosts to be scanned manually. It's common practice to automate asset population by leveraging logs generated by network services such as DHCP. This can lead to rogue machines being included in the list of hosts to be scanned. Given, given the scenario, an attacker may be able to perform relay, creden relay and creden credential harvesting attacks. Grabbing SSH, SSH creds of the hardware. Doing some research and Googling, I came, I came across a, a great post by Julia Evans around the use of S-Trace to monitor system calls made by the SSH process. Check out the link in the slide. It's really worth having a look if you're interested in this kind of thing. The scenario here is that we have a presence on the network and we are running an SSH server that we're going to use to grab credentials. In the screenshot you can see in the terminal Three terminals showing S trace monitoring the SSH process and child process. This is quite important, and the, I think the dash F follows the child process of SSH. And a tail of the output of this trace and an authentication attempt at the bottom left hand side. I'm going to see if I can do that. So, S trace output, um, S trace of the file, uh, process I mean, the output of this, uh, grep output of this uh, tail of the output. Uh, and an authentication attempt. You can see in clear text the username and the password for that SSH authentication attempt from a password authentication attempt. I found gripping through this output uh, to be very tedious and inconsistent. So what now? Grabbing SSH creates the easy way. <coughs> I wanted something to, that, that I could set up and leave running for a period of time to grab these credentials. In hindsight, the choice of a honeypot is very obvious. I never thought of a honeypot as an offensive security tool. I do now. The Kauri honeypot is a very easy to set up uh, honeypot and is, does exactly what I needed it to do, capture SSH credentials. Everything is output cleanly to a log file and is easy to find all login attempts. In the screenshot, you can see the tail of Kauri's output, specifically looking for uh, login attempts, uh, and the authentication attempt below that's super neat and easy to read. So you can see that the output is way easier to see. It's, everything's in one, one nice place. The username and password, and there's the login attempt. So I'm quite a visual guy, and... Uh, I don't usually do PowerPoint presentations, and I recently discovered animation, so you're going to get some animation of that process happening. So what we have here is hosts appearing on the network, which will eventually be pushed onto the list of hosts to be scanned by the automation of uh, asset population. And Nessus, will, Nessus, in this case, I'm not 
hit, bragging on Nessus here, it's any vulnerability scanner that's set up to authenticate to hosts to scan them. Slowly, Nessus will scan each of these hosts. I'm really proud of this animation, by the way. <laughs> uh, and that's great. So you'll get through the process, and as, as um, new machines are picked up on the network, Nessus scans them and feeds that back into the vulnerability management process. But what happens if a rogue SSH server appears on the network? I particularly like this picture. Uh, so here we have an illustration of Nessus SSHing into the box to do its uh, uh, root scans. Credentials are compromised. Your host now has credentials that will be used for scanning across the enterprise. So all the machines that Nessus has scanned, or a vulnerability scanner has scanned, will now be, comp will be compromised by your rogue SSH server, and you'll have access to all of those machines, and you'll be able to obviously move laterally and perform further red teaming activities from there. But that's just Linux. What about Windows hosts? The concept here is similar to the SSH credential harvesting attack in that <coughs> we run a rogue service and use that attack, use that to attack other hosts on the network. Here we leverage the fact that the vulnerability scanner is going to try and run an authenticated scan against us and relay that authentication attempt to, other, to victims on the network. To do this, we use multi-relay, one of the awesome tools in the Responder Toolkit. Uh, on the right, right of the screenshot, you can see Nessus running an authenticated scan against, the, against my malicious host. Uh, the authentication attempt is relayed to a victim host, and we drop into a system shell. So now when you're looking at this, there's one more host behind this that is being, the, the, the authentication attempt is being relayed to, uh, and then we drop into this sort of system shell. And because I recently discovered animations, you're going to get one more animation. So the idea here is that when Nessus or a vulnerability scanner scans a malicious host, SMB in this case, that will be then relayed to other victims on the net, on the, in the environment. And you'll then have to compromise and move laterally onto other hosts. So mitigations for this. Mitigations around these kinds of attacks are well known, but seldom implemented adequately, especially in Linux environments. In Linux environments, make sure that security tools, the security tools that you're using use key auth uh, to scan hosts in the, in, the, in the environment. In Windows environments, implement SMB signing via Active Directory Group policy. Uh, even if you have to log into the host and manually enable SMB signing, do it. It'll probably save your life. Right, I had uh, planned on doing a live demo of this, but running four VMs on one machine became quite tricky. So I have got a video of this in action. Let's see if I can make this work. Can everybody see that okay? Oh, it's a bit blurry. I'll explain what's going on. <laughs> okay, so on the top left-hand side, We've got multi-relay targeting another host on the network uh, and responding to all authentication attempts. At the bottom, we've got the tail of the SSH honeypot running, uh, grepping for login attempts. And we're doing this all in one shot because generally what you'll have in the, in the config, in this configuration is you'll have a bunch of authentication policies trying to authenticate against any host that can find basically blindly. So as we run this, I'm just going to push enter on each of those. That started the multi-relay on the left-hand side, top left-hand side. On the bottom left-hand side, we're grabbing for passwords, and I've already done this once, so you can see that there's a password uh, a login attempt there. That's not for this particular demo. But as it runs, you'll see that when Nessus authenticates to this rogue host, it drops a system shell on a victim machine and grabs the SSH credentials for uh, this particular scan. And you see it's quite aggressive in the way that it actually tries to authenticate, it tries over and over again uh, for the various scan types that it wants to do, and it makes it quite, uh, e quite easy to grab uh, SSH credentials if you're using password authentication. 
on the top left-hand side, you can see that the relay has now relayed an authentication attempt to an, uh, my victim VM on, on my internal network here. Um, this is a system shell, obviously, because it's SMB running as a system. And from there, I'm just going to demonstrate that you can do a who am I, and you can dump system, you can dump hashes and that kind of thing, obviously, because you're the root or system. Right, and that's pretty much my talk. Thank you very much for listening. If anybody has any questions, I'm happy to answer them if I can. So you say the mitigation is to use uh, SSH keys, right? So for, for Linux side. Um, what about if you are using uh, this combined? So uh, you use SSH keys to log in into, into the machine, but then you need to provide maybe like a password for the sudo access. So how does it work? Can you capture this sudo uh, password? You can't really because this, this is an authentication attempt to a machine that doesn't have the account you're trying to authenticate with. It's just basically a rogue SSH server with, which you don't have any control over as an enterprise and the attacker has all the control over, right? So you'll never get okay, a, you you'll never get an SU, uh, a relevant SU because it's, it just wouldn't work because they, they'll actually never log in. Okay, great. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you very much then. Thanks.